Your work is never finished, my dear. I know that fort needs maintenance thousands of years. So here we can see our specialist mason hired by the monument protection as a subcontractor and he's applying the dark colored lime mortar to the wall which which you can see here that they have been rebuilding that edge something missing there so usually they are having that pink color which is the same uh, mortar in fact but without that black carbon powder which they add to make it look uh, darker when it is on the outside because they want to imitate this this dark effect which the water gets over time now that's their decision i think it would be much better to leave it pink but but they they make it uh, in fact black immediately so that when the job is finished uh, the same day it should look like it's already a hundred or two hundred years there you can see the effect on the top and, and here, here's the old wall which looks like a patchwork which is actually also very nice so we can look uh, closer at his tools he has a very special small tool made um, custom made I know because he told me that he's having that small tool done in the blacksmith shop and all he needs is his skill, that small tool, and, and a piece of carton board to hold his uh, small batch of lime mortar. <laughs> and I think this is the day of uh, work of one morning. Uh, uh, how much time it took you to do this one? This one, this open, morning. He started this morning. Ah, this morning he started. And he's lucky because today the, the sky is a little bit covered. So uh, he he he's not uh, in the in the han sun and the mortar also because the mortar doesn't like the sun to be drying it quickly. Lime mortar needs time to dry, usually even a couple days. So they usually have to cover it with some. Ah, here are his friends. They're mixing, huh? So they're mixing this. I can see the black uh, pigment hmm. and the tourists are back too so this is very nice to see that after all these months of lockdown and restrictions we have the tourists coming back here too so plenty plenty as it used to be before hmm. So you had a group of Russian or I think from that Russian speaking region of the world? Uh -huh, yes, I know him already. How are you? Good, you? Good. Nice to see the tourists back also, huh? <laughs> hmm. So, here's the location where he's working, close to some clock tower. And, and in the background you see the bay of uh, Gala, which used to be full of ships in the old times, where, which were connecting this island to the whole world. Uh, today there are only fishing boats and some navy boats there. No more passenger boats, unfortunately. Uh, that was also why the fort was put here, because there was that connection for sending the cinnamon abroad. <coughs> and of course the, the Dutch and the British and first the Portuguese uh, dwelt in this fort. So here are more tourists coming. So, so that video turns out to be about a little bit of everything. Uh, actually, it's about 
doing this lime water pointing on the wall and then we see the tourists I did not expect this many tourists today but the town is starting to feel again okay that's it for today about this place now this is the finish on the little bit dried lime mortar seal because he likes to make that surface look rough and he's using that brush so that's the the ultimate know-how in this case because we don't want the, the the wall to look like here where it is shiny they don't want that they want it to look rough and when you compare this to the place there where they even coral parts inside it's really very rough Another area of the fort, not far from the place I just show you. I showed you. You can see a couple of cannons showing up here again. They were towed away for the time of the works because they have been rebuilding this uh, wall here entirely. Uh, it was at least 15 meters height of wall which uh, collapsed. Uh, before and they have been rebuilding this now but in the old style <coughs> with uh, the same stones and especially lime mortar no cement used at all here okay before leaving this fort area here I'll make a close-up on these funny well done statues now they seem to be made of metal no that's cement Somebody was casting them in cement. So here we have probably that's supposed to be a European uh, security guard of the fort. The dress is something like 18th century. 18th century, his boots. No, he's not wearing gold boots. He's wearing some, some coverings of his legs with shoes. That caliber seems to be pretty small for that time. Here is somebody who looks more like he's from the uh, late 19th century or early 20s. Maybe wearing some outfit which looks like he's uh, brought to Ceylon by the British with his sick headgear, sick C S I K H K H. Now he's just having a stone and he's barefoot, that's interesting. Maybe he's just uh, having wet feet after having a shower because I think that these troops uh, definitely had shoes provided by the British. And here we have somebody else who came to Ceylon in the past to take care of uh, colonial businesses. We have this uh, Chinese looking military dressed up Asian having a, a baton and, and a very tough look and this nice hat which is uh, very efficient to protect his uh, brain from the hot sun he's having uh, comfortable looking shoes and then um, he has tied up uh, a roll of uh, my God, I don't know the word anymore uh, in English. Uh, these, these things are also used in the First World War still to replace leather boots. And you have to, to tie them up every day when you go uh, outside. Here, here he has a probably small ammunition pouch and some fancy decoration on his chest. Uh, interesting that he has a strap together with that hat which the civilians usually don't need and is there somebody else here still? yes we have here 18th century uh, probably 18th century still wearing that t uh, bent up hat which, which was very popular in that time by military and civilians alike 
remember George Washington and Napoleon and these people they had all this kind of hat too in those days which is actually nothing but a large sun hat which you bend up so he is having a real gun here this one also has the right caliber I mean this man is nearly in life size his head is maybe a little bit oversized but from the size he's just making 1 meter 90 which could still be possible in those days even though the people were smaller and uh, you see how hot that must have been to wear such a dress in the tropical climate no wonder that there were also plenty of people ending up in the hospital maybe they were not always dressed up like this it's just for show for some parade or what what's the point of having such a wool uniform and dye in the tropics here is a, a, a helper from Africa he also wears a uniform she's not even bare chested like we would expect from workers in the hot climates he has boots he's pretty well equipped and he's just carrying a stone uh, under the orders of this white guy who definitely needs to have a very good pay to do this kind of work thousands of miles away from his home watching people moving stones so he even wears a cap so that's really to be I hear something down there maybe it's supposed to be the trousers being a little bit large or maybe he has some stocks of stuff in his pants okay and the jacket looks very interesting because it looks a little bit French style like some Zouave African colonial troops would wear no buttons and here's a artist impression of a, a man from a African descent now uh, some of these people uh, stayed in Ceylon of course uh, even though even the, the the Europeans had some people staying so these way became burgers if they stayed and settled down if they stay as, uh, as a member of the society of Ceylon till now burgers and this would be somebody I don't know how they call these guys because the Moors are actually not associated to Africa but rather to the Muslim community but they call them Moors these people also have a few descendants still but they mixed up so you can barely recognize these among the population their descendants are pretty well faded in and here we have Indians of course which would be just kind of a Hindu population of Sri Lanka which which has a, a very ancient population and then these newcomers who just stayed when the British used them as uh, clerks and soldiers and guards and also on the plantations and this is somebody who may have just returned home after he survived to his duty in the company of uh, either the British um, Far East Tradings or the Dutch VUC which was uh, basically some kind of government affiliated private company so these people were all contractors and they had the choice to return home after their time if they survived because you can imagine mosquitoes snakes there was nothing to help the people in case they got hurt here before vaccination and other medicines became more elaborate.